Hi, welcome to our video lecture series. This is uh, part one of a two-part lecture series on cryptography. My name is Ron Richter. I am the program coordinator here at Blue Ridge Community and Technical College. So let's start off, what is cryptography? Cryptography is, uh, the canned uh, definition is scrambling information so it cannot be read. More specifically, we think about cryptography as transformation of information into a secure form so that unauthorized persons cannot access it. And this is transformation of information into a secure form for either transportation or storage. Cryptography um, isn't a modern idea. It actually can trace its roots back thousands of, of years, as far back as the days of Julius Caesar. Caesar was a notorious crypt cryptographer who was sending um, cryptographic messages back and forth across his empire for years. We today think of cryptography as the masking of messages or the coding of messages. Spy movies um, elicit ideas of cryptography in our, in our mind. But again, it's just this idea of scrambling information so that messages that are easy to discern become difficult to discern or the transformation or the encryption of attack at dawn can become a message that is unlegible. Stenography is another term that some people sometimes confuse with cryptography, but stenography merely hides the existence of data. Stenography can trace its roots back uh, many, many, many years as well. One of the most readily available images of, st of stenography was identified during World War II when covert agents could inject hidden messages into public newspapers. If you knew the sequence of the letters to pull out of an article, you could assemble a legible message. Today, ste steganography in IT has the same concept but is executed a little bit differently. Now we think of, steg of steganography in, I in IT as an image or uh, audio or video file that contains hidden messages embedded in the file. We would think of this as uh, maybe a JPEG image embedded with um, hidden messages written in the code itself. We need to define some terms if we're going to talk about crypt cryptography. When we talk about cryptography, um, we use the term plain text. Plain text is the data that's about to be encrypted, or the clear text data, or data in the clear. Cipher text is the term we use for the data that's already been acted upon. It's the encrypted data. The cryptographic algorithm, or cipher, as they're called, just consists of various procedures based upon mathematical formulas that are used to both encrypt and then decrypt data. Each of these ciphers has a key or a mathematical value that's entered into the algorithm that produces the ciphertext, that changes the plain text into ciphertext. This process can be reversed using the same exact methodology and the key to decrypt the message. Cryptography in IT basically provides us five basic protections. It gives us the confidentiality of messages. It allows us to guarantee integrity of messages and data. It gives us this availability notion of providing files or data to people who are entitled to uh, access them. It provides us the, the ability of authentication, so it ensures that a sender can be verified through cryptography. And it gives us the protection of non-repudiation gives us the ability that someone performed a particular action and denies them the availability that they did not perform that action. There are really three categories of cryptographic algorithms. Your hash algorithms and your cryptographic algorithms, both system symmetric and asymmetric we refer to as symmetric ciphers and asymmetric ciphers. We'll start talking about hash algorithms first. Hashes, you can remember, are a one-way algorithm. 
it's an algorithm that creates a unique, non-reversible value, very much unlike a cipher, which creates ciphertext that can easily be decrypted or reversed. Because it's non-reversible, it's a one-way algorithm, you can only use a hash for comparative purposes, either to ensure or prove integrity that a piece of data was received the same way that it was sent by computing a hash. A secure hash algorithm has some unique characteristics. A secure hash algorithm has a fixed size, meaning that both long and short data sets have the same resulting hash size, have the same amount of resulting uh, characters in the hash value. No matter if you start off with a, with a um, value of two characters or 100 characters, once those are both hashed, they result in the same sized hash value, character-wise. They are unique, meaning that two different data sets cannot produce the same hash value. When that happens, we refer to that as collisions in the hash. They have to be original, meaning that data sets cannot be engineered to have a predefined hashed value with that hash algorithm. And finally, they have to be secure, meaning that the resulting hash value cannot be reversed or re-engineered to determine the original plain text value. So what are other examples of hashes that we use today? Hashes have been around for many, many years now. Um, hashes usually evolve from a series. Um, some of the earliest modern hashes um, were from the Message Digest family. Um, the term digest meaning um, like a fire or our digestive process that we use as humans. Once something is consumed either through digestion or fire, it can't be um, uh, reinstated once again. So Message Digest uh, describes the early series of digests that we saw um, in the last two decades. Beginning with Message Digest 2 and evolving all the way up through Message Digest 5, um, each of these hashes really is distinguished by the key value growing larger. Today we use a different kind of hash with a different type of algorithm, the SHA hash. Uh, SHA standing for Secure Hashing Algorithm. And again, the series of hashes evolved over the last decade as the key sizes get larger. Larger key sizes meaning more security. Within the last 10 years, uh, the federal government has uh, adopted uh, SHA hash 256 as the hash, uh, standardized hash for all federal employees and federal agencies that handle um, government data to use. So within the last decade, the federal government and DISA, or the, the Department of Information Security Agency, and NIST, National Institute of Standards and, Tech, and Te Technologies, has made the shift from MD5 to SHA-256 because of the collisions that were identified in MD5. So back to those five protections that cryptography can provide us, Hashes cannot provide confidentiality. They can prove integrity because we can hash a message and prove that the message was, at, was the same as it was originally sent by computing the hash value again. Hashes cannot provide availability. They cannot provide the protection of authentication. And they cannot provide the protection of non-repudiation. The only protection they can provide is protection of integrity. Because again, we can compute a hash on a, on, a, on a message, send the message along with the hash value. The recipient can receive the message, run the same hash on the message, and compare the two values, the sent value versus the received value. So they can only provide integrity checks. 